Warning, you need to hear this. Someone is watching you, and no, this isn't just paranoia. They're lurking, scrolling through your pages, quietly observing every move you make. Why? Because your existence threatens them. They can't stand to see your growth, your potential, and they're desperate to know what's coming next. But here's the twist, they're not just watching, they're planning. And trust me, the reason they're so fixated on you is far more chilling than you think. Stay with me, because by the end of this, you'll know exactly who they are, why they fear you, and how to protect yourself from what's coming. Right off the bat, I'm picking up that some of you might be feeling a bit off, maybe drained or like something's just not quite right, but you can't fully figure out why. This person seems to be obsessing over you because, in their mind, they feel like you've taken something from them. It could be that they think you've taken their position, their person, or some opportunity they thought was theirs. I'm also picking up that this could be someone of the same gender as you, possibly linked to a romantic interest or competition in some way. For others, it could be work-related, someone who feels like you've taken a role or spotlight they wanted for themselves. This person feels like something significant has been taken from them. For some of you, this could be someone working in a similar field, seeing you as competition, thinking there's no room for both of you to thrive in the same space. I'm bringing this up because you might not even be aware of it, yet you sense something's off feeling drained or unsettled without really knowing why. Some of these individuals may be misguided, influenced by darker energies, and confused into thinking that you're their enemy. For those of you on a spiritual path, especially my chosen ones, you know how low vibrational energies can manipulate people, making them believe you're their adversary to get them to act on their behalf. This seems to be a case where these darker influences are at play. In some situations, these people may be acting out of real emotions, reacting to genuine feelings of loss. Perhaps you got a job or opportunity they were hoping for, or maybe someone they were interested in is now interested in you. Instead of processing these emotions and realizing that God has something else for them, they've slipped into a darker, negative mindset. There's someone out there who is dealing with genuine pain over a loss, and it just so happens that you've gained what they feel they've lost. This person feels like they've lost something, but what they've lost is actually part of your path and destiny. It's not your fault, what you've gained was meant for you. Whether it's a job, a relationship, or another opportunity, it wasn't truly meant for them. In fact, it may have been part of their own karma or consequences of their actions that led to this loss. However, they're struggling to accept that and instead are projecting their frustration onto you, making you out to be the cause of their misfortune. It's unfortunate because this person is lost and has convinced themselves that you're the enemy, when in reality, you're just following your own journey. I know readings like this can be draining, and you might be feeling exhausted as well. What I'm hearing is that you need to keep your energy flowing, do things that re-energize you, like going outside, getting fresh air, or doing cleansing rituals like cord cutting. You may not even realize that someone is feeling this way about you, and in some cases, you may have never even met this person. But your energy and presence are powerful, and people are noticing. If you've recently entered someone's life, or if you've stepped into a position they wanted, they now know who you are, even if they didn't before. Your recent elevation has placed you on their radar energetically. As a result, spiritual warfare may feel more intense right now. The opposition may feel strong, but remember to stay grounded in prayer and focus on your purpose. Feeling drained doesn't mean you're doing something wrong, it can actually be a sign that you're on the verge of elevating even further. It's important to have compassion here because, in their pain, this person is being influenced by lower energies, and they're fixated on you. They may try to provoke or instigate conflict, but it's essential to stay centered and not engage. This person is trying to interact with you in hopes of getting a reaction. They want to provoke you, and you may feel defensive in response, 
but it's important to approach this situation with love and understanding. It's difficult to grasp the hateful energy they're projecting, but keep in mind that they are lost and struggling. One key reason to forgive and not let this person affect you is because low vibrational energies thrive on reactions. Whether it's the person themselves or darker forces at play, the goal is to feed off your response. They're holding on to something that's slipping away from them whether it's a relationship, job, or some other opportunity and they believe that if they can bring you down or get your attention, it will somehow restore what they've lost. Their focus on you is misplaced, as the issue they're facing has nothing to do with you directly. But they've convinced themselves that you are the cause of their loss. As a result, you're likely experiencing a strong level of negative energy or evil act from this individual. However, it's essential to recognize that their issues stem from something deeper and beyond your control, and the best way to handle it is by staying grounded, not giving them the reaction they seek, and moving forward with love and compassion. For some of you, this situation goes much deeper. In a spiritually centered community like ours, where many of you are teachers, healers, or mentors, it's not uncommon to make spiritual connections along the way. However, some individuals may turn to spirituality for healing when they might actually need therapy or professional mental health support. I'm not saying this to be disrespectful, but it's important to recognize that while spirituality is powerful, taking care of one's mental and emotional health is equally necessary. It seems there's a strong sense of delusion involved here. If this individual is also into spirituality, they may mistakenly believe that their misfortunes losing a job or experiencing personal hardships are your fault. They might even think you're sending them spiritual attacks when, in reality, you're simply minding your own business. For those who believe in spiritual warfare, this may feel like part of that battle, but at its core, this person is unhappy with themselves. There's a part of them that genuinely believes you've taken something from them, though that's far from the truth. It's more likely that you're in a position they admire, and this admiration has turned into envy or resentment. In some cases, it could be as innocent as being caught in the crossfire of their personal issues, like a failing relationship. You may find this energy particularly bothersome, possibly even feeling it in your dreams or experiencing nightmares without knowing the cause. For some of you, this person may be involved in spirituality or even trying to use darker practices, thinking it will help them, though it's only making things worse for them. However, remember that you are highly protected. It's important to stay focused on your path and not get drawn into conflict. The energies surrounding this person may want to create division or war between you two, hoping to distract you from your true purpose. By continuing to cleanse, protect yourself, and forgive, you can rise above this situation. At the end of the day, it's the responsibility of your person to ensure that outside influences don't interfere with your relationship. If you need to step back and let things unfold, allowing any unresolved karma to play out, then that's okay. I'm sensing that some of you might feel like someone is your soulmate, but there's third-party interference. The key is to not engage with that interference, just keep focusing on your own life and moving forward. If you get stuck in a space where you're constantly battling or being dragged into drama, it won't lead to anything productive. If someone is truly meant to be in your life, they'll naturally come toward you. This is what I feel is happening, which is why I'm encouraging you to maintain your focus. For instance, if you're dating someone and their ex or another person is causing issues, it's up to your partner to handle that. Whether it's an ex, a family member, or a friend, it's their responsibility to create boundaries. In some situations, your partner may not be able to fully cut ties with that individual, but you need to take everything with a grain of salt. The goal of these external influences is often to distract, manipulate, or confuse. Some people may appear to wish you well on the surface, but energetically, their intentions can be different. That's why it's essential to stay grounded and trust your intuition when dealing with these spiritual dynamics. 
You might sense something off, but can't quite pinpoint what it is. Avoid hyperfixating on the situation. Don't spend too much time pulling cards, overanalyzing, or trying to figure out all the details. Ironically, while I'm sharing this message, it's not about diving deep into their energy, but about giving you a heads up so you don't fall into confusion. This is the message your angels want you to know, so you can stay focused and not get caught up in unnecessary distractions. Today's message is really about letting you know that, yes, something feels off or strange, and someone seems very focused on you. You're being given this awareness not to dive deeper into it, but to detach and distance yourself. Some of you may be wondering who this person is, and if you don't know, that's actually a good sign. Just pray away any negative energy, because if this reading resonates with you, it's possible you've unintentionally made an enemy along your path. This often happens to light workers and healers, as people can be triggered by your light. As I've mentioned before, your presence alone can sometimes provoke others. People around you might feel threatened, fearing you're going to take something or someone away from them, whether that's true or not. For some, this is part of your journey, while for others, it's just confusion or delusion. And especially as you continue to step into higher levels of influence, whether spiritual, personal, or professional, you may unintentionally trigger people who compare themselves to you. Remember, comparison is the thief of joy. The key message here is that you've been focused on your own growth, development, and alignment with your purpose. You haven't set out to make enemies. Instead, you've been shining your light and improving yourself. This is why you consistently rise above these challenges. It's not you versus others, it's you versus the best version of yourself, and that's why you keep coming out on top. Even if others try to compete with you, it's a one-sided competition that you're already winning. There's no question about that. You are safe, loved, and protected. However, this message is being delivered to let you know that someone may try to provoke or instigate something with you. You may already sense this, or if not, they will likely reveal themselves soon enough. If you feel like there's an evil eye or negative energy around you, pray or light a candle to absorb it and ask for clarity. Once revealed, acknowledge it, protect yourself, and move on. There's no need to keep fighting battles or losing sleep over it. Some struggles are already being fought on your behalf in the spiritual realm, and this one, in particular, is already resolved. This person is focused on you because they can't accept that they've lost something they're stuck in a chapter of their life that's already closed. But for you, the focus should remain on moving forward and continuing to shine your light. What we've got going on here is the energy of that hidden gem. Many of you are this incredible hidden gem that people don't see coming. You're highly protected, and that drives certain people crazy because they can't seem to get to you or provoke a reaction. There are energies around you that may be trying to get your attention or get a rise out of you, but it doesn't work. Even when they send their strongest spiritual attacks, like death spells, you might just feel a little tired the next day, but that's nothing compared to the energy they're pouring into trying to bring you down. Some of you might notice a small physical discomfort, like a sore back, without even realizing the extent of what's being sent your way. It's almost laughable because the negativity they're sending your way has no real impact on you. And I understand it could be scary for those in the spiritual world, but for those who've been on this path for a while, like myself, you start to see it for what it is, people projecting their confusion and misguided feelings onto you, sometimes thinking you're against them when you don't even know who they are. It reminds me of that Cardi B quote where she says something like, she says she's my enemy, but I didn't even know she existed. That's how it is sometimes. You're so focused on your purpose, asking God and your angels, what's next? You don't even have time to worry about what others are saying about you. Many of you have fulfilling lives outside of your work or career. You're busy with family, community, volunteering, and so many other things that you simply don't have time to engage in petty drama. 
Meanwhile, the person or people focused on you seem to have a lot of free time on their hands. Some of them might even be unemployed and bored, which is why they obsess over you. It's like the more they focus on you, the more time they're wasting that could be spent improving their own lives. And the irony is, some of you don't even know who these people are. You wouldn't even be able to pick them out of a crowd. For some, it might be personal. They may be upset that someone they like now likes you, or they could be bitter about a job you got that they felt should have been theirs. But for many of you, it's pure delusion. They're fixated on your energy, your success, or your position in life, but they don't realize that their obsession is getting them nowhere. You truly are a gem, and it's important to remember that when people become so focused on you, it's actually a sign that you're doing something right. It's because you have something they want, whether that's your energy, your power, or your spiritual strength. You're in such a high spiritual place that low vibrational people or forces might try to use others to get to you. This is a clear sign that you're someone of importance in the spiritual realm. Think about it. Why do you always seem to have a target on your back? Why do these people try so hard to bring you down when you're simply minding your own business? It's because you're not focusing on lack, you're focused on your next step. Some of you might be in a period of solitude or introspection, but I sense you're not stuck in negativity. Instead, you're continuing to move forward and shine in your unique way. There are people out there who focus way too much on what someone else has going on, and that energy can be draining. Even if someone has wronged you badly, sometimes the greatest blessing is having them out of your life and out of your focus. It's far better to walk away from toxic people than to keep going back and forth with them. I faced challenging situations where distancing myself was costly but ultimately worth it for my peace and energy. It's often easier to walk away from drama than to engage with it, though this can be tough when someone is provoking you. This applies to work and new relationships where jealousy or interference might arise. Despite challenges, I believe in handling things with prayer, manifesting, and trust in God, rather than resorting to harm or manipulation. It can be hard to comprehend that there are people out there who don't care about being good or kind. For them, it's all about achieving success, gaining money, or getting attention at any cost, whether it's winning someone over or securing a position. They're operating from a different mindset, one that aligns with negative energies. For those of us walking a spiritual path, we know sometimes it's necessary to start fresh and detach from things or people that don't serve us. Right now, you're being blessed, and someone out there is pressed about it. But remember, your peace and energy are more valuable than engaging with people who don't have your best interests at heart. Sometimes it's wise to keep your achievements and successes to yourself, especially in environments where others may not be supportive or understanding. Celebrate your wins privately and share them with those who genuinely want to see you succeed. If you've recently come out of a difficult period or dealt with someone trying to impose their will on you, it's important to acknowledge your progress. You've likely moved past that situation, and even though you might still feel some residual negativity, you're on a positive trajectory. You're entering a time where you're reaping the rewards of good karma. Trust your intuition, it's guiding you through every step of your journey. You're manifesting and attracting the good things that are meant for you because you've put in the hard work. With the chariot showing up, you're an unstoppable force. While others might try to slow you down or distract you, they can't stop your progress. You're protected, and it's crucial to focus on your path without letting negative energy from others affect you. It's not a matter of if you will be tested in life, it's a matter of when. Everyone will face trials at some point, and everything you've learned will be put to the test. The real question is, can you trust God to guide you through these tests, knowing that He is refining and developing you over time? While nobody enjoys being tested, it's essential for growth. You can't move forward without being challenged. So, let me ask you, have you ever been tested by God? 
There's a key difference between testing and tempting. God tests us, but he never tempts us. Testing is a process of refining. When God tests you, it's to strengthen areas of weakness, to certify and fortify you, helping you grow in your faith and character. You don't need to fear when God reveals a weak spot, because he's working to help you overcome it. On the other hand, the enemy uses temptation to exploit those same weak areas, with the aim of destroying your future, your relationships, and your testimony. As Warren Wiersbe says, a faith that cannot be tested cannot be trusted. Think about it, would you board an airplane that had never been tested? Or allow a doctor to perform surgery on you if they'd never passed a medical exam? In the same way, God gives us trials and tests to ensure our faith is genuine and resilient. James 1 verse 13 reminds us that God does not tempt anyone with evil, nor can he be tempted. While the devil seeks to tempt us into sin and lead us astray, God tests us to strengthen our faith, to help us stand firm, and to draw us closer to him. This is one of those moments of testing we all experience. What God desires is to make our faith both strong and pure. It's important to trust him during these times of trial. In the Bible, a test is not just a random hardship. It's a refining process designed to purify and prepare your heart. You're constantly being tested, prepared, and shaped by God. If you miss this truth, you'll see life's challenges as random problems you just want to avoid. You might try to escape from every difficulty. No one looks forward to being tested, but if you understand that God is like a master weaver, using every circumstance to work for your good, you'll start to see purpose in your struggles. When your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. And when that endurance is fully developed, you'll be mature and complete, lacking nothing. As it says in 1 Peter 1 verse 7, the trial of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. When Jesus returns, don't you want your faith to be like refined gold? For that to happen, God will allow your faith to be tested by fire. Some of you may be going through that fire right now, facing trials that feel overwhelming. But remember, God has no intention of harming you. His purpose is to reveal whether your faith is genuine, because tested faith is far more valuable than gold. When your faith is tested, it will grow and be refined. Amy Carmichael once took her girls to watch a goldsmith at work, and she pointed out that the refiner never leaves the gold while it's in the fire. In the same way, during every trial you face, your Savior is always present, even when you cannot see him. Brothers and sisters in Christ, your faith will be tested. And when it is, it will be strengthened and purified. Tested faith is authentic faith. When your faith proves to be genuine through testing, it will lead to praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. The very trial that causes you pain, sorrow, and grief today will ultimately bring praise, glory, and honor when you stand face to face with Jesus. As Job says in Job 23 verse 10, when he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. He knew that after the trial, God's testing would make him better. James 1 verse 3 tells us to consider it joy when you're in a trial. That's not easy at all. But Paul reminds us that God's power is perfected in weakness. Do you believe that even something difficult, tragic, or traumatic in your life can be used for good by God? When you truly believe that, you take away one of Satan's key weapons, doubt, and place it back in God's hands where it belongs. Believing this changes your story. Testing reveals the true depth of your faith. Your spiritual faith must be tested in real-world situations. Remember this God will always provide a way for you to pass the test. The Lord will provide. You don't have to cheat, lie, or steal. All you need is to trust God because he will provide the way forward. 
With every setback heartache, moment of loss or disappointment, times when I may have doubted or questioned what God was doing, He was always working with intention and purpose behind the scenes. One of the primary ways God helps us grow is by testing us. Think of it like working out in a gym you test your muscles by lifting weights, and the more weight you lift the more it strains and builds your muscles. In the same way, God builds your character through a series of tests. Faith, much like a muscle, only grows stronger when it's tested and strained. When you work out, your muscles develop tiny tears. As your body heals, those muscles grow back stronger, filling in the gaps. That's how faith operates too. God places us in situations that stretch and challenge our faith so that, through the process, it can grow back even stronger. While we may not always enjoy this process, I've seen it happen enough to believe it's how God often works. Strengthening our faith is a priority for Him, and He's committed to the task. A test isn't designed to make you fail. Just like teachers test students to reveal their knowledge and strengthen their skills, God's tests reveal what's already inside of us and help us grow stronger. James reminds us of this truth when he writes, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Tests are meant to build us up, not break us down. Trials and tests build perseverance. They make you stronger and reveal strengths you didn't even know you had, those moments where you think, wow, I didn't realize I could handle that. They also strip away what's unnecessary, like refining raw ore. Just as ore is placed in a furnace to burn away impurities, trials burn away the things we don't need, leaving behind what is pure and valuable. James talks about becoming mature and complete, not lacking anything. This requires a shift in how we view difficult times. Instead of asking, what is God doing to me, we should be asking, what is God trying to build in me? What does he want to strengthen in me? It's never an easy process. Strength doesn't come the easy way. As the saying goes, a faith that can't be tested is a faith that can't be trusted. God wants you to have faith that you can rely on. He wants you to know that your faith is dependable. So while God will never tempt you, He will certainly test you to build that trust and strength. That's what it's all about. Hardships often prepare ordinary people for an extraordinary destiny. It's no wonder you'll rarely find a strong person who hasn't faced a difficult past. When God is preparing to shape you, He often allows tough situations to come your way. These challenges will make you sweat, hurt, and push you to your limits, but they are refining you from the inside out. When you're going through trials and can't control your circumstances, focus on controlling what you can, your mindset and your attitude. It's been said that a bad attitude is like a flat tire, you won't get far unless you change it. So, don't let anger or rebellion take root and turn a bad moment into a bad day, or worse, a bad life. Some people hold on to bitterness and never forgive, and that resentment can transform a tough moment into a prolonged season of struggle. You don't have to let one bad moment define your life. Instead, make the necessary changes within yourself. Pray, God, test me, refine me, and remember his words. You must endure many trials for a little while. It's temporary. It's just for a moment. Stay focused, stay strong, and endure. Let God guide you through your trial, and while you're in the midst of it, it's crucial to seek his perspective. During testing, it often feels like the heavens are closed, and you can't hear from God. Have you ever experienced that? Going through a tough time, desperately wanting to hear from him, but feeling like there's only silence? That's because when you're taking a test, the teacher often remains quiet. In those moments of testing, you might not hear or see any changes, but you need to trust that even in the silence, God holds you in his hand. 
God knows your struggles. He sees when you feel like you can't go on, and He knows when you're overwhelmed. Don't lose hope, help is on the way. As the Bible reminds us, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So, keep standing, just focus on getting through today. You don't need to worry about tomorrow, you'll have the grace you need when that day comes. Trust God in these testing seasons because He hasn't forgotten you. Don't misinterpret the silence or the struggle as God's absence. On the contrary, the word test in Hebrew means to look closely at or to choose. If you're being tested, it's because God is paying close attention to you, preparing you for what's to come. God sees the challenges of tomorrow and uses today's tests to prepare you for them. So, trust that He is fully engaged in shaping you for the future He has in store. How are you being tested today? Is it an emotional struggle you're facing? Maybe it's physical. Perhaps you're feeling your patience stretch to its limits. A powerful question to ask God is, Lord, what is this test for? How am I being tested right now? And it's even possible to thank Him. Thank you, Lord, for considering me worthy of this test. The Bible says to consider it pure joy when you go through trials, and though it may seem difficult, it's a moment to lean into the test you're facing today. One key element in this is trusting God's timing. Often, the real test is not so much about your faith as it is about your patience. Can you trust God's process to shape and refine you over time? Many of life's tests come down to this, waiting. And when we get impatient, whether it's about a spouse, a job, a breakthrough, we realize it's not that our faith is being shaken, but that our patience is being stretched. When you have nothing, and you still choose patience, you reveal the strength of your character. So, when you're in that season of waiting, remember, God isn't just making you wait for the sake of it. He's developing your character. He's refining you, removing the parts that are unrefined and preparing you for what's ahead. You may be in the midst of a, when, test right now, asking, when, Lord? When will you fix this? When will you resolve this issue? When will you bring clarity to my relationships, finances, or health? The waiting seems endless, but know that God's timing is perfect. The question isn't just, when, but also, how, he's using this time to build something greater in you. Faith means waiting on God's timing without knowing exactly when it will come. If you've been waiting a long time for your prayers to be answered, whether it's for a child, a spouse, a job change, or anything else, remember to be patient and trust God's timing. Even when it feels like nothing is happening, God is always at work, orchestrating things for the good of those who love Him. Our role is to keep our faith strong while God is working behind the scenes. Think of Joseph, who spent time in the pit, a difficult and painful place. Yet, the pit had one silver lining, it forced him to look up. And just as God reached down to rescue Joseph, he will also reach out to help you in your struggles. It's important to remember that while God's timing might not align with our own expectations, he is never late. You might be feeling weary and doubtful now, questioning whether things will ever get better. But don't give in to those doubts. The test you're facing isn't forever. God has already planned an end to your struggles. You need to find your renewed strength and keep going. God didn't bring you this far just to abandon you. What he began, he will complete. Continue to stand firm in faith, hold on to his promises, and trust that what you need is on its way. Even when you can't see any signs of progress, keep believing and stay in an attitude of faith. Faith involves waiting for God's timing even when the end isn't clear. It means hoping for a miracle without knowing the process, trusting God's purpose without understanding the reasons, and persisting despite uncertainty about the duration. Every challenge you face is part of a test. No matter where you are or what you're going through, 
Remember that with Jesus by your side, you have what it takes to pass this test. Imagine embarking on a journey through an unknown landscape where each step forward is an act of faith and each breath a whisper of hope. This journey is not marked by the visible challenges of towering peaks or vast oceans, but by the internal battles that we face. It is marked by the moments of doubt, fear, and uncertainty that cloud our path. Yet, it is in these very moments that a profound truth emerges, a beacon of hope in the darkness. God is for us. He is the compass that guides us, the light that illuminates our path, and the strength that carries us forward. Today, we will delve into understanding how to find strength in the Lord and be assured that He will never fail us. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. In Isaiah 41 verse 10, we find a promise that anchors us. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This verse is not just a comforting thought. It is the very essence of God's promise to us, an assurance that no matter the journey, we are never alone. Together, we will discover the means to navigate life's uncertainties, fortified by the knowledge that God's presence is ever with us. Now, as we journey through life, we often encounter terrains that test our faith and resolve. These moments filled with uncertainty can make us feel as though we are journeying through a thick fog, each step uncertain, each decision filled with the potential for misstep or the risk of error. Yet, it is precisely in these moments of vulnerability that God's promise to be with us, to guide and strengthen us, becomes most tangible. Life's journey is unpredictable. We face challenges that seem insurmountable, problems that appear unsolvable, and questions that seem unanswerable. It is in these times when the fog of uncertainty surrounds us that the weight of our own weakness becomes most apparent. However, it is also in these times that the strength of God's presence shines brightest. The story of David and Goliath is told in 1 Samuel 17 verse 45 serves as a powerful reminder of this truth. Facing a giant, David declared, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. David's confidence did not stem from his own capabilities, but from his faith in God's power. Like David, we are called to face the giants in our lives not with fear, but with the assurance that God is with us, providing the strength we need to overcome. This journey through life, with its highs and lows, is not a journey taken alone, but a shared journey with God as our constant companion. His promise to be with us is not just a reassurance of presence, but an assurance of active support. In moments of weakness, He provides strength. In times of doubt, He offers faith. And in periods of turmoil, He grants peace. Philippians 4 verse 13 captures this beautifully. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This verse is a testament to the transformative power of God's strength in our lives, a reminder that regardless of the challenges we face, we possess the capability to overcome them, not through our own might, but through the strength granted to us by Christ. As we navigate the uncertainties of life, let us remember that we do not walk alone. The fog of doubt and fear may at times cloud our path, but the light of God's presence is a constant guide. His word the compass that directs us, and His strength the foundation upon which we can build our resilience. In embracing this journey, let us draw near to God, seeking His guidance and strength in every step. Let us trust in His promise to be with us, to strengthen us, and to uphold us. And as we do so, let us find comfort in the knowledge that no matter the challenges we encounter, we are journeying with the Almighty God who never fails us. Let us now explore the practical implications of God's favor and guidance and how His presence empowers us to face life's adversities with strength and confidence. As we journey through life, it often feels as though we are navigating a vast, uncharted wilderness. The terrain is rough, the paths are unmarked, and the destination seems distant. It's in these moments of uncertainty and struggle that the presence of a guide can make all the difference, a guide who not only knows the way, but also walks with us, offering support, encouragement, and direction. 
This guide is God, and His promise to be with us is a testament to His unfailing support. Consider the words of Romans 8 verse 31, which boldly declares, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? This verse is not just a rhetorical question, it's a declaration of divine support. It reassures us that with God on our side, the challenges and adversaries that we face lose their power over us. The realization that the Creator of the heavens and the earth is for us should fill our hearts with courage and our steps with confidence. This simple truth changes everything. It means that no matter what we face, we are not overwhelmed because our God is bigger than our struggles. Knowing this, we can face anything, understanding that with God, we are always in a position of strength. This reassurance helps us stand firm no matter what comes our way, confident that we are never alone or without help. Now, this assurance of God being for us is not meant to suggest that our journey will be without challenge. Rather, it is a reminder that when we encounter obstacles, we do not face them alone. The battles we fight are fought with God's strength, and the victories we claim are won through His might. Just as a seasoned guide leads a traveler through treacherous terrain, God guides us, offering His wisdom and strength to navigate the complexities of life. The practical application of this truth is seen in our daily lives. When we face decisions that leave us perplexed, God's wisdom is available to guide us. When we encounter situations that threaten to overwhelm us, His strength is sufficient to sustain us. And when we feel isolated or abandoned, His presence is a constant companion, offering comfort and reassurance. But how do we tap into this divine support? The key lies in our relationship with God. Just as communication is vital between a traveler and their guide, so too is our communication with God. Prayer becomes the medium through which we express our fears, our hopes, and our needs. And it is through the study of His Word and the leading of the Holy Spirit that we gain insight into His character, His promises, and His will for our lives. Furthermore, the journey of faith is one that requires trust. Trust in God's timing, trust in His promises, and trust in His character. It is a trust that is built over time through experiences that testify to God's faithfulness and goodness. Each challenge overcome and each need met serves as a milestone in our journey of faith, reinforcing our trust in God and His provision. This journey, though personal, is also shared. As believers, we are part of a community of faith, a family of fellow travelers who share the road with us. This community offers support, encouragement, and accountability, reminding us that we are not alone in our journey. It is within this community that we find opportunities to share our stories, to celebrate our victories, and to encourage one another in times of struggle. As we reflect on the assurance that God is for us, let us also consider the response that it calls for from each of us, a response of faith, of trust, and of obedience. The faith that God is who He says He is, the trust that He will do what He has promised, and the obedience to His guidance and commandments. It is through this response that we experience the fullness of God's support and guidance in our lives. Therefore, let us carry with us the assurance that God is indeed for us. Let this truth anchor us in times of uncertainty, strengthen us in times of weakness, and guide us in times of decision. For with God on our side, we have nothing to fear. We really don't. Remember, the devil is a liar. Let us move forward in faith, confident in the knowledge that no matter what we face, we do not face it alone. God is with us, He is for us, and through Him, we are more than conquerors. We will now turn our attention to the transformative power of embracing God's strength in our lives. Throughout the course of our daily lives, we encounter various forms of adversity, moments that test our faith, challenge our resolve, and sometimes threaten to overwhelm us. It's in these moments that the true depth of our reliance on God is revealed. The realization that our strength alone is insufficient is not a cause for despair, but an invitation to lean fully into the strength that God provides. This reliance on divine strength is not a sign of weakness, but a testament to our understanding of where our true power lies. The Apostle Paul's words in 2 Corinthians 12 verses 9 to 10 serve as a profound reminder of this truth. He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness.
Therefore, most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This seemingly contradictory statement highlights the core of Christian strength. We do not take pride in our own power, but in God's. Our weaknesses and obstacles turn into opportunities for God's strength and grace to shine through in our lives. Embracing God's strength requires a shift in perspective. It means viewing our challenges through the lens of faith, recognizing that with God, no obstacle is insurmountable. This shift doesn't negate the reality of our struggles, but places them in the context of God's greater power and purpose. Again, it's an acknowledgement that our journey through life is not undertaken alone, but in collaboration with the divine, where our efforts are enhanced and completed by God's power. This divine partnership empowers us to approach life's battles with a different mindset. Instead of being overwhelmed by the magnitude of our challenges, we are encouraged by the knowledge that God is with us, fighting for us, and through Him, we have victory. And remember, this doesn't mean we won't face difficulties or that our faith won't be tested. What it does mean is that in the midst of our battles, we have a source of strength that is inexhaustible, a well of courage that never runs dry, and a promise of victory that is certain. Living in the strength that God provides also has a profound impact on how we relate to others. It compels us to move beyond our limitations and to act with compassion, courage, and conviction. As we experience God's strength in our lives, we are motivated to be agents of His love and grace in the world around us. Our battles, once seen as personal struggles, become opportunities to testify to God's power and to offer hope to others facing similar challenges. My friends, let us also consider that our God is unchanging and unfailing in nature. His steadfast love and faithfulness are our constant companions through every season. To truly grasp that He is for us, we must also understand that He will never fail us. And in so doing, we must understand His character. God is not like humans who might make promises only to break them when circumstances change. God's promises are as unshakable as His very nature. When He commits to being by our side, He means it for eternity. This assurance enables us to be confident that He is for us and face the uncertainties and challenges of life with a calm heart and a steady spirit, knowing that regardless of what we encounter, God's support remains unwavering. Living with the knowledge that God will never fail us transforms the way we approach every aspect of our existence. It allows us to take bold steps of faith, to dream big, and to pursue our God-given destinies without fear of abandonment. When we stumble or fall, as we inevitably will, this promise offers us the strength to rise again, dust ourselves off, and continue the journey. It's a reminder that our failures do not define us in the eyes of God. Rather, his unfailing presence is a testament to our inherent worth and potential in Him. Therefore, let us carry forward the assurance that no matter the trials we face or the mountains we must climb, God's presence and support are guaranteed. God is for us. He is with us every step of the way. His promise is as reliable as the dawn. In every moment of doubt, every season of struggle, and every celebration of victory, may we remember this. Our God will never fail us. My friends, let's carry with us the empowering truth that resonates at the heart of our message. God is for you. So be strong in the Lord. He will never fail you. In every step of your journey through the highs and the lows, remember that you are never walking alone. The Lord stands beside you as a steadfast guide, offering His strength, His love, and His unwavering support. Let this knowledge fill you with courage and hope. When you face the mountains of life, look to Him draw from His infinite strength, and move forward with confidence. For in the Lord, you have an unshakable support, and with Him, you will navigate the challenges of life not just with endurance, but with victory. Be strong in the Lord, my dear friends, for He will never fail you. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, I come before you with a heart full of thanksgiving and praise. 
I acknowledge your greatness, your majesty, and your sovereignty over all creation. You are the Rock of Ages, the King of Kings, and Lord of Lords, worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. Your power is unmatched, your wisdom and love are boundless. I worship you, Lord, for who you are, my fortress, my deliverer, and my strength. Lord, I give you thanks for the gift of life and for the countless blessings you have poured into my life and the lives of my loved ones. I am grateful for your mercies that are new every morning and for your grace that sustains me. Thank you for your unwavering presence and for walking beside me through every trial and triumph. Lord, I ask for your forgiveness for my sins, for the times I have fallen short of your glory. I also choose to forgive those who have wronged me, releasing any bitterness or resentment in my heart. Cleanse me, Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Father, I stand on your promises, drawing strength from your word. I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I rebuke the spirit of fear, doubt, and discouragement, binding them in the name of Jesus, and I claim faith, hope, and love in my life. Lord, empower me to be strong in you and in the power of your might. Fill me with the wisdom, courage, and strength to face life's battles, knowing that with you, victory is assured. I decree healing over my body, mind, and spirit in the name of Jesus. I pray for your healing touch upon my loved ones. Mighty God, I stand against every attack of the enemy, praying against sickness, depression, financial lack, and strife. I claim protection over myself and my loved ones, asking you to shield us from all harm and to guide our steps. Bless us, Father, with your favor and peace, and may your healing hand touch every area of our lives that needs restoration. Lord, as I say this prayer together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We come in agreement, standing united in faith as we pray for each other. Strengthen us, Lord, to overcome every challenge with grace and to walk in your ways. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, guiding us into all truth and empowering us to live lives that honor you. Bless us, Lord, with your presence. May we experience your profound peace, joy, and love in abundance. Protect us from the snares of the enemy and let your hand be upon us for good. We declare your lordship over our lives, claiming victory over every battle, healing for every wound and sickness, and provision for every need. Let your will be done in our lives and in the lives of my loved ones, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Have you ever felt the tranquility of early morning when the world is hushed and the day brims with potential? This moment, so serene and pregnant with promise, resembles commencing our day with prayer. Just as the dawn's light begins to blanket the sky, dispelling darkness, initiating our day with God illuminates our path, guiding us through whatever lies ahead. Prioritizing prayer as the first action of our day isn't just about the words we utter. It's about forging a connection with our Creator. It's about offering our time, thoughts, and hearts to Him before anything else. Today, we delve into the significance of making prayer the inaugural act of our day, exploring how this simple yet profound practice can influence the course of our day, impact our mood, and shape our interactions with others. When we start our day with prayer, we declare to God, you are the most important part of my day. This act of prioritizing God sets the tone for everything that follows, affirming our faith and trust in Him. It's a practice that not only strengthens our faith, but also enriches our daily lives, infusing them with peace, joy, and purpose. Commencing each morning with conversation with God is more than just a ritual. It's a lifeline, anchoring our souls in the certainty of His love and promises. It establishes a precedent for the rest of the day, offering a perspective aligned with God's will and brimming with hope. Morning prayer isn't merely a routine. It's an act of faith, believing that God hears us, cares for us, and is actively involved in our lives. It's an expression of our dependence on Him, acknowledging that we need His wisdom and strength to navigate the day. Moreover, starting our day with God empowers us to embody the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 
These qualities become more evident in our lives when we spend time with God each morning, enriching our relationships and allowing us to become vessels of His love. Morning prayer equips us with wisdom for the day's decisions, guiding us in both major choices and everyday matters. It sets a rhythm of communion with God that can continue throughout the day, transforming ordinary moments into opportunities to experience His presence and work in our lives. The practice of starting our day with God through prayer is a journey of faith, trust, and surrender. It promises not just a good day, but a God-centered life, rich in peace, purpose, and joy. Let's commit to making prayer the first action of our day, inviting God's presence into every moment and allowing His will to shape our lives. Morning prayer reminds us that true peace is found in the presence of God. Let us, therefore, cherish these early moments with God, allowing His peace to fill us and flow through us. May it be a guiding light throughout our day, a reminder of God's constant presence and unwavering love. In doing so, we not only enrich our own lives, but also extend this peace to those around us, creating ripples of God's love in a world in desperate need of His peace. Embarking on each new day with morning prayer not only immerses us in peace, but also fortifies us with a strength that is not our own. This strength, bestowed upon us by the Almighty, is a testament to the power that lies in beginning our day rooted in divine communion. It is a strength that surpasses physical capabilities, nurturing our inner resilience and empowering us to face life's challenges with courage and determination. This divine strength is a promise from God to those who seek Him, as vividly captured in Isaiah 40 verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Morning prayer is our act of waiting on the Lord, of dedicating the first fruits of our day to Him. And in return, He renews our strength, equipping us to soar above the trials and tribulations of life. The strength we gain from starting our day in God's presence goes beyond mere endurance. It transforms our perspective on adversity. Challenges become opportunities to witness God's power at work in our lives. Trials become platforms for His grace to be displayed, and weaknesses become conduits for His strength to be perfected. This strength enables us to persevere with joy, knowing that our victory is secured in Christ. Furthermore, the strength derived from morning prayer infuses our faith with vitality. It anchors us in the truth of God's word and promises, fortifying our trust in Him. In moments of doubt or fear, the remembrance of our morning encounters with God serves as a beacon of hope, reminding us of His faithfulness and the unshakable foundation upon which our lives are built. Also, the strength we receive from morning prayer prepares us for spiritual warfare. Armed with the full armor of God, we can stand against the schemes of the enemy, secure in the knowledge that the battle belongs to the Lord. Our morning prayers act as a declaration of our dependence on God, activating His power and protection over our lives. In essence, the strength gained from our daily communion with God is multifaceted, touching every area of our lives. It is a strength that does not boast in its own might, but in the power of the One who promises to be our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. As we continue to prioritize morning prayer, let us do so with the expectation of being filled anew with God's indomitable strength, ready to face whatever the day may hold with confidence and grace. In the scriptures, we find compelling stories of individuals whose lives were profoundly shaped by their commitment to putting prayer first. These biblical characters offer us timeless examples of how starting the day with God can lead to divine guidance, protection, and empowerment in fulfilling God's purposes. Their stories encourage us to make prayer the first action of our day, trusting that like them, we will experience God's guidance, protection, and empowerment to fulfill our divine calling. As we follow in their footsteps, let us remember that our prayers, whether in times of joy, uncertainty, or distress, are always heard by a God who is intimately involved in the details of our lives. Let us first seek God in prayer, laying the foundation of our journey in His presence. This divine attentiveness assures us of His unwavering support and guidance. It beckons us to approach Him with confidence, knowing that each prayer plants the seeds for miracles yet unseen. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, I come before you in awe of your majesty and grace. 
You are the creator of the heavens and the earth, the king of kings and lord of lords. Your power is infinite, your wisdom beyond understanding, and your love for us everlasting. You are worthy of all honor, all glory, and all praise. I thank you, Lord, for the gift of life and for your mercies that are new every morning. We are thankful for this new day, a fresh opportunity to experience your love, to walk in your ways, and to reflect your light to those around us. Thank you for your faithfulness and for your unfailing love that surrounds me and my loved ones. Lord, I am grateful for your daily provisions and blessings. In your presence, there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Merciful Father, I acknowledge my sins before you and ask for your forgiveness. I also choose to forgive those who have trespassed against me, releasing any bitterness or resentment, for you have called us to live in freedom and peace. Lord, I come to you seeking to start each day in your presence, to lay the foundation of my day upon your word and prayer. Help me to seek you first, trusting that all I need will be added unto me, as you have promised. I ask that you would guide my steps, direct my paths, and fill me with your wisdom. In the name of Jesus, I declare that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I rebuke and bind every plan of the enemy to disrupt my peace, steal my joy, or derail my purpose. In the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit of confusion, fear, worry, anxiety, and discouragement. Father, I ask for your protection over me and my loved ones. Shield us from the attacks of the enemy and surround us with your angels. I ask for your healing hand upon us, believing for restoration and strength in our bodies. Lord, bless us in our coming and going, and let your blessings and favor rest upon us as we walk through this day. Let us be vessels of your love and grace to others. As I say this prayer together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We come in agreement as we pray for each other, asking for your Holy Spirit to fill us afresh, to empower us to live lives that glorify you. Guide us, Lord, in your wisdom. Protect us in your strength. Heal us in your mercy and bless us with your abundance. We claim victory over every challenge, declare healing over every illness, and give thanks for your provision and protection. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth and in our lives as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Now, for those who are listening and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to receive God's grace with an open and repentant heart. Start where you are. Your past doesn't matter. Jesus came to seek and to save those who are lost. God loves you. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but for all to come to repentance. Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer. I pray. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now that you have prayed this prayer, you can ask a pastor to baptize you at a local church and make that decision public. Baptism is a symbol of that decision to follow Jesus. Then, I encourage you to have fellowship with other believers, to learn more about your new life, and to get to know more about God. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comments section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God that is in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.